old, and this is my story. So it was New Year's Eve, and Shimmer and Shine, Blaze, Marshall, and Swift <laughs> wanted to stay up super, super, super late for the fireworks. Shimmer had a list of things they could do so they wouldn't get sleepy, but some were already <gasps> yawning. <sighs> So Shimmer and Shine blew their noisemakers. <laughs> and Shimmer said, first up, decorating! Shine was like, Bims are May! And the entire house was covered in gems! <gasps> Swift flew around and hung up streamers all over the place. But he got a little too comfortable. <gasps> me, 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 me. This caused four. Whoa! I'm awake, I'm awake. Next on the list was playing in the snow. Blaze zoomed around and helped Marshall make an awesome ice sculpture. But suddenly, the water stopped. Marshall fell asleep. And Shimmer said, we need to stay awake, you guys. Finally, it was almost time for the fireworks, and there was one thing left on the list. Wait for it. A pup pup boogie dance off. So they danced and danced and danced. But just before the fireworks started, they all fell asleep. We did it. We stayed awake. Good night, everyone. Happy New Year. The end. You can find more of your favorite shows weekday mornings on Nickelodeon and everywhere you find Nick Jr. Toy Story, Toy Camp. It's camp day, Andy exclaimed as he rolled out of bed. Good morning, camper, his mom called up the stairs. Andy was leaving for a week of sleepaway camp, where he would go hiking, swimming, and maybe even fishing. He was really excited. Finish packing your clothes and come have breakfast, called Andy's mom. Andy filled his suitcase with shirts, shorts, and pajamas, plus a swimsuit, sunscreen, and bug spray. He latched the suitcase shut and looked around the room. Goodbye, Andy said to his toys. I'll be home soon. He picked up his suitcase and left the room. As soon as Andy and his mother left for camp, the toys came to life. I'm going to miss Andy, Woody, the cowboy said. Me too, said Ham the piggy bank. Me three, said Rex the dinosaur. What will we do without Andy? Well, said Woody, we could play camp too. That's a great idea, Buzz Lightyear the space ranger cried. How do we play camp? asked Ham. That's easy, Woody replied. We'll do everything indoors that Andy will do outdoors. What's the name of our camp, Woody? Slinky Dog asked. How about Camp Toy Chest, said Woody. To Camp Toy Chest and beyond, cried Buzz. The Green Army men marched out of the closet. I'll be the camp counselor, said Sarge. He walked over to Mr. Mike. Lights out, he announced. Everybody go to bed. But it isn't bedtime, said Rex. Then let's put our together our tents, Sarge replied. The toys looked around for something to use as tents. A few minutes later, Buzz crawled out from under the bed, carrying some of Andy's t-shirts. Buzz Lightyear to camp toy chest. I found our tents, called Buzz. The toys helped each other pitch their tent, using pencils for poles. I'm too big for my tent, said Rex, as he tried to get out. He tripped over a tent pole. So Bo Peep found two kites and helped him make a teepee to sleep in. Thank you, said Rex. Time for bed, Sarge announced. It's bedtime, Ham asked. Did the sun even go down? No, silly, said Bo Peep. I think Sarge is just having us practice for when we're ready for the real thing. He must think this is boot camp, not fun camp. Sarge overheard Bo Peep. Oh, fun camp, he thought. I could do that. Never mind, he said. Let's play tug of war instead. The toys cheered. They used Andy's sock. They tied Andy's socks together to make a rope. And played three rounds of tug of war. 
During the final game, Slinky Dog stretched himself as far as he could, backing all the way up to the wall. On the other side, Rex held onto the rope tightly, but the socks finally slipped between his claws. The toys toppled over onto each other, and Slinky Dog's team won. Later the afternoon, Sarge ran over to Mr. Mike and announced that it was time to play Capture the Flag. Woody explained the rules of the game to the other toys. They made flag pulls out of markers. They put small scrap of fabric on one pole and Bo Peep's bonnet on the next to make the flags. When they started to play, Buzz pointed at something. Rex looked the other way and Buzz sped by him and captured the flag. Huddle up team, said Ham. We need a plan. I'll scare, I'll scare Buzz, then Woody can run past them and capture their flag, Rex said, suggested. His teammates looked doubtful. The dinosaur always tried to be scary, but he never really was. I can do it, Rex insisted. So the toys went back on the field. Rex ran over to Buzz and roared, but Buzz didn't get scared. Whoa, Rex, he said. You got a frog in your throat? Rex frowned. Poor Rex. He's always trying to be scary. The toys played all afternoon. Everyone had luck. Toy Story, Toy Camp. It's camp day, Andy exclaimed as he rolled out of bed. Good morning, camper, his mom called up the stairs. Andy was leaving for a week of sleepaway camp, where he would go hiking, swimming, and maybe even fishing. He was really excited. Finish packing your clothes and come have breakfast, called Andy's mom. Andy filled his suitcase with shirts, shorts, and pajamas, plus a swimsuit, sunscreen, and bug spray. He latched the suitcase shut and looked around the room. Goodbye, Andy said to his toys. I'll be home soon. He picked up his suitcase and left the room. As soon as Andy and his mother left for camp, the toys came to life. I'm going to miss Andy, Woody, the cowboy said. Me too, said Ham the piggy bank. Me three, said Rex the dinosaur. What will we do without Andy? Well, said Woody, we could play camp too. That's a great idea, Buzz Lightyear the Space Ranger cried. How do we play camp? asked Ham. That's easy, Woody replied. We'll do everything indoors that Andy will do outdoors. What's the name of our camp, Woody? Slinky Dog asked. How about Camp Toy Chest, said Woody. To Camp Toy Chest and beyond, cried Buzz. The Green Army men marched out of the closet. I will be the camp counselor, said Sarge. He walked over to Mr. Mike. Lights out, he announced. Everybody go to bed. But it isn't bedtime, said Rex. Then let's put our together our tents, Sarge replied. The toys looked around for something to use as tents. A few minutes later, Buzz crawled out from under the bed carrying some of Andy's t-shirts. Buzz Lightyear to Camp Toy Chest. I found our tents, called Buzz. The toys helped each other pitch their tent, using pencils for poles. I'm too big for my tent, said Rex, as he tried to get out. He tripped over a tent pole. So Bo Peep found two kites and helped him make a teepee to sleep in. Thank you, said Rex. Time for bed, Sarge announced. It's bedtime, Ham asked. Did the sun even go down? No, silly, said Bo Peep. I think Sarge is just having us practice for when we're ready for the real thing. He must think this is boot camp, not fun camp. Sarge overheard Bo Peep. Oh, fun camp, he thought. I could do that. Never mind, he said. Let's play tug of war instead. The toys cheered. They used Andy's sock. They tied Andy's socks together to make a rope and played three rounds of tug of war. During the final game, Slinky Dog stretched himself as far as he could, backing all the way up to the wall. On the other side, Rex held onto the rope tightly, but the socks finally slipped between his claws. The toys toppled over onto each other and Slinky Dog's team won. Later the afternoon, Sarge ran over to Mr. Mike and announced that it was time to play capture the flag. Woody explained the rules of the game to the other toys. They made flag pulls out of markers. They put small scrap of fabric on one pole and Bo Peep's bonnet on the next to make the flags. When they started to play, Buzz pointed at something. Rex looked the other way and Buzz sped by him and captured the flag. 
Huddle up, team, said Ham. We need a plan. I'll scare I'll scare Buzz, then Woody can run past them and capture their flag, Rex said, suggested. His teammates looked doubtful. The dinosaur always tried to be scary, but he never really was. I can do it, Rex insisted. So the toys went back on the field. Rex ran over to Buzz and roared, but Buzz didn't get scared. Whoa, Rex, he said. You got a frog in your throat? Rex frowned. Poor Rex. He's always trying to be scary. The toys played all afternoon. Everyone had lots of fun. Soon it started to get dark, and the toys were tired. They decided to sit around a campfire. The toys climbed into the top of Andy's dresser and got his battery-powered nightlight. They set it on the floor, turned it on, and sat around it. Now let's tell scary ghost stories, Ham cried. Woody told a story about a really spooky haunted house. Everyone shivered. Next, Ham told a story about the evil Dr. Porkchop. At the end, Bo Peep got so frightened, she let out a little scream. Then it was Rex's turn. He told a story about the ghost of a stegosaurus. But the toys didn't get scared. They just yawned. All right, now it's finally time for lights out, called Sarge. The toys went to their tents and fell asleep. The next day, the toys needed something to do. How about we go for a hike, asked Rex. Sure, cried Woody. Counselor, lead the way. Sarge and the other Green Army men led the toys through a maze of objects under Andy's bed. They climbed up the leg of the bed and across the bread spread. Then they hopped up to the windowsill. Woody lowered a rope and climbed down the wall. Rex, Buzz, Sarge, and the others followed. They had had a good time. And they hiked around Andy's bedroom and closet the rest of the day. All week long, the toys had fun playing camp. The night before Andy was to come home, the toys decided to have a talent show. Buzz was the judge. First, Bo Peep made her sheep disappear and reappear. Then Woody showed off his rodeo skills as he jumped on our RC car and roped ham. Then the Green Army man did acrobatics. Rex didn't have a talent, but he had an idea. During the show, he quietly got up and hid behind a sand pill near the stage. At the end of the show, Buzz stood up and cleared his throat. He was ready to announce the winner. And the winner is... He paused. Just then, Rex sprang from his hiding place and let out a mighty roar. Roar! Ah! Yelled Buzz. He was really frightened. He turned to run away and slipped. Then he realized it was Rex who had roared. He grinned sheepishly and got up. The other toys giggled. Rex beamed. He'd finally scared someone. Buzz turned to Rex and congratulated him. Then he gave Rex a ribbon for best act. The toys all clapped. As he turned the lights off for the night, Woody smiled. I hope Andy had as much fun at camp as we did at ours, he thought. The next morning, before Andy came home, the toys cleaned and straightened up the room. They folded his t-shirts and put them away. They put the pens and pencils back in his pencil case, and they arranged themselves neatly around the room. Soon, Andy raced up the stairs. Hi, everyone, he cried. I had so much fun at camp, but I missed all of you. We missed you too, Andy thought. Uh, we missed you too, Andy, Woody thought. Welcome home. The end. Some body washes are so boring. <laughs> and some deserve to be put on a pedestal. Meet Native. Clean, simple, sensational body wash that'll make you fall in love with your shower. Stop settling for basic body wash. My God. What's up? <gasps> I'm in love. Yeah, duh. Native only uses clean, simple and... Loading up the dino train with coal and lumber, oil and grain. And high above the whistle's cord, ring dino shafts of all aboard. The dino stoker shovels coal, the flames are under his control. The dino boiler builds up steam, soon pistons pump, a rhythmic theme. The dino families cry. With cheers, the dinos wave goodbye. 
Adventures wait just down the track. We're off, they say, but we'll be back. The engine coughs and dino chugs. The train moves like a line of slugs. We haven't traveled very far. Let's dino push each railroad car. We think we can, they dino say. Our dino might will save the day. The smokestack coughs out dino soot. They sweat from dino head to foot. The hill's too steep for that much weight. And so they toss the dino freight. Without a load, they quickly climb and reach the peak in dino time. A dark and narrow dino tunnel sucks and spits them through its funnel. Out the chute and down the slide, a roller coaster dino ride. They dino scream and squeal, yippee, and wave their dino arms with glee. When the car tips left or right, they lean way out and hang on tight. Oh no, the dino brake men shout. The train won't stop, the trestle's out. And as the bridge is growing near, their joy turns into dino fear. They clamber up and cling on top, unsure of how they'll dino stop. They dino duck and hide their eyes, but then they get a big surprise. They dino rocket off the bridge while train cars fly from ridge to ridge. The train goes on without a crash. We're dino flying. Then... Curse flash! They dino groan. How can it be? We thought this trip was water free. What made us want to dino roam? Let's shake this lake and head back home. They pile aboard a handcar there to seesaw back with dino flare. They dino pump instead of chug and make it home for one big hug. Though dino tight in their embrace, they still find dino dreams to chase. We'll never take another train. But how about a dino plane? The end.